said, let me show you. He said, no, there's still love. I said, this, this is great. He said, no, look, those people are merging together, becoming one thing. And I seen him in a tantric. I said, okay. Then he said, I said, well, how do you pick? He said, it's all from your mind. He said, look, then he morphed one um, person into that girl, that, that, that woman that used to come in my bed, the woman that was the perfect features. And I said, oh, it's my mind. He said, yeah, let me show you something. He made 10 pair of grass, all her outfits in Foxy Brown. On it. I said, oh, I get it. So each entity that decides to participate in it, your is from, still from your perspective. They also said that in that movie, but dreams may come. He, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. said, I'm in your world. He said, well, you're making this world. He said, I didn't make that tea. He said, no, I made it. He said, well, I'm in your world with co-creators, but this is your world I'm in. So it's the same thing. As co-creators in this participation, he was showing me this wisdom. I said, oh, I'm going to orgy worlds. I have to get out of this one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry. And then uh, uh, I woke up with a bloodshot eye. Yeah, that was a hell of an orgy. So I still, that was interesting. I said, oh, he showed me that woman. That was the woman of my dream. You know what I'm saying? So now, you fast forward, not thinking of nothing. Khadija just emailed me on Facebook and says, I get a pack of pack, like everybody else. Somebody said, give it to her for free. I said, sure, I'll give it to you free. What's your mail address? You sound sexy. You got no business up, but you sound sexy. And uh, she said, well, I'm about to move. But when I move, I'll get you up. Sure enough, she hit me up around my birthday the first time. It's May something, the second time. Where's your pitch at? Put up one picture, kind of dry mm -hmm. neck up. Like she's gonna be a catfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let me look at her tag pictures. Looked at the tag pictures, her friend tag. Peace picture, you know, at the club. So I said, she was kind of fine. Send me some pictures. That was my, that was my friend. Send me some pictures. You ain't gonna catfish me. <laughs> Send me whole body shots. I'm like, oh, snap. And let me tell you. She was skinny. I fed her every goddamn pop of those. Go ahead, eat. Get a lobster. That's the first thing. As soon as you know, first thing, hot wings, get a lobster. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to hit that. <laughs> but, um, so, so, I basically started talking. And I didn't want to get my number. So back then, you had Blackberries. And Blackberries had a message code. It wasn't your number. Get the message code. So I was going to make it a start. Yeah, I know she's cool. We talk and talk. I said, I come to Atlanta, visit you, blah blah blah. So that was our first date. I said, take me where? Well, I'll take you where. So I'm like, she said, spawn dividends. That's the spawn dividends. That's the spot, I guess, in Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> seafood spot. So she goes, I said, give whatever you want, sweetie. I'm like, this chick, fine. She said, I have some high things, sir. <laughs> So that I ain't know I'm working with nigga. You might have been, might have been on a budget. So um, you know we chilling. So she eventually met the boys. Met Keenan. He's the oldest one. I knew it was gonna be trouble. Tr tr First thing he came. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm not fixing to be your homeboy. So we go to the movies, I remember the movie, we watch Saw. While we in the movie, and y'all know this, and this is another science too. When you're in the dark, you put your girl a face shakers. You mean, you mean right? You be encouraging that. Oh yeah. yeah. This is all for now. That's actually a science. Their spirit is actually more. You know, see that show girl see you look up and looks the guy looks different. Mm -hmm. Oh, we embrace that shit. That's who picked past lives. Now, <laughs> now, um, when I'm looking at Khadija's face, I seen that woman that used to come in my dreams. I said, "What the fuck?" I said, "She's either going to kill me, this is a premonition of my death, or she's either going to kill me." So, I'm, I didn't even tell her yet. I kept looking again. I'm like, "That's her. That's the fuck." Eyes. I remember that stupidity. I packed up my wagon and moved to Atlanta. That's a bold statement. I don't I can't drive and don't drive. That's death. You know what I'm saying? She goes, it's quits. What you gonna do? It's walk. <laughs> 
<laughs> that shit is like Kung Fu. You're just gonna walk the earth. <laughs> like, I'm just gonna change my life. You're doing the fucking adventures now. You go like this, you know what I'm saying? Now, I knew this was that. That's when you start to say words like soulmate. Now, those words don't really mean nothing. Because the sister asked, what about twin flames, kindred spirits? These are just ways to try to classify. One ain't the other. You know what I'm saying? But if you had to classify, kindred spirits are like my brother who makes this shirt. I knew him since two years old. And I already did the spiritual work. I seen Bobby telling us, yeah, we need to come back to Earth. Because we're going to forget this, and there's going to be some of us that's going to help us remind who's in. It's like going to the army. And I'm got him. Put your hand in there. We going. I'm going there. I said, if you go, eventually, if you get me in my place, I'm going to get you a job. And I remember this bit. Since he was two years old, I was a wreck. You know, I tell old lady, shut up. And later on with Prince socially, like I'll see a guy, like, you didn't pass one day. You still cool though. You're like, look at they don't like you, Patty. I'm like, why not? I'm just being honest. You <laughs> didn't do that. So I used to see Prince be like, yeah, you met him. And then soon as me and him be scared me, and I'm like, oh, you got it kind of socially front. I just really had no concept of it. So Danny and later my man Prince got me in this place and and in 98, I was working at Record Age. Money was great, but not as great as when the internet started. And porn became a part of the game. <laughs> Lordy, I started selling on porno when the internet began. I promise you. It was, the base was 25000 a month. And all I did, all my bills were still late. Lobster every day. You know what I'm saying? I had no car. I ride my bike to the seafood place, lock the bike up and go in there, get a filled lobster. You know what I'm saying? All the trimmings. Rare lobsters with black claws and shit. Like, oh man, that's good to get on the bike and just get it. Real nigger shit. So of course the internet blew up real quick and the bubble. <laughs> so now we're just walking around going, oh God, they're gonna take all of this stuff now. And they did. And we were rock bottom. At the same time my boy was coming out of Philly, he was doing the little hustle thing. She didn't get right. So we both going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean talking like uh, the peanuts. Wah, 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 wah. And um long story short, he says these words. Let's just study God. No, we need to. Let's just study, find out why it all exists. Kiss my ass. Look, look, let's watch some Farrakhan TV. For what? So we watched them laughing. And, and so I was already, my father was in the metaphysics and, and he raised me in meditation. So I already was there in the intelligence. But I was going to buy some porno downtown Fort Fulton. And across the street was a brother named Shabbat. Who was selling conscious tapes? No, no science. I was going to buy World Up number forty-four, <laughs> and I said, "Oh, these are the tapes we've been watching. So we need some tapes." Then he goes, then he goes. I said to him, which was uncharacteristic of stuck people. I said, "What's the most intelligent thing you got on your tape?" He said, "Well, it's probably from the Bobby Hamilton." Give me two of those and give me what you think. I said, "Give me Farrakhan, Oscar Crazy." And whatever stuff was there, but keep giving me body. So I kept just following him up. I watched, I thought Bobby was not that guy. Like, he was cute, but I was in the hell. And the flu ended the other. You the You need to sit right here. It's got to be smart. There's too much shit in it. As I traversed through the metaphysical path that inwardly that comes out of me that supersedes the regurgitation of the usual melanin feeling. Oh, my brothers, y'all gotta get this. I didn't even need to say it, we'll get it. <laughs> but I was deaf in the field, in the field, in the field, based upon it. Then I started feeling, well, I already felt intelligent. 
And then she bats it, it comes to a live match. I'm like, nah, I'm not going that far. I, mean, I go home and play with these tapes. Went to Bobby in the live lecture. That's happening. Just his mastery. I don't think, because I didn't want to lecture, I didn't care I was lecturing, I wanted to stop it. But his mastery, I knew wasn't coming from the telephone. I could see him peruse the crowd. And there was one lady sitting there just like that. <laughs> Somebody grabbed their head. He went directly to her and said, he came real close on her and said, look, I need you to help me with something. He said, I was in Denver. I did a whole lecture with my penis <laughs> and she laughed so hard that her arms unfolded and then she just enjoyed the lecture. She, whatever reservation she had, she stopped. And I seen not just a fool or somebody who was just clowning, I seen somebody who was actually scientifically perusing the crowd and talking directly to their heart shot. He shut down her blockage, opened up her heart, and started giving up what she really was, as opposed to what she was going to resist. So seeing things like that, started saying, oh, there is a little bit more to this guy than just somebody who's always laughing, and so on and so forth, just kept collecting, blah, blah, blah. But it was my boy, a kindred spirit, that actually helped that. So he's kin, kin is your brother. So a lot of these people, even Man and woman who get together are kindred spirits, but uh, they can he evolves with me, you know what I'm saying, uh, as a kindred spirit. But a soulmate is, I can't put in the words the synchronicity. Every single thing I'm not, I promise you, is every single thing she is. So the union, when you hear opposites attract, the union is a perfect fit. Every food she eats, I think, is freaking utterly disgusting. <laughs> Every creamy, nasty thing. <laughs> Every TV show she watches, I don't want no parts of it. Dynasty and all that kind of crap. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's the guy. But it's amazing because when she's doing it and eating it and watching it, I'm like, oh my God, that's the greatest thing ever. I don't know where it comes from. It is an absolute balance. And from, I had to walk through the door without baggage for real. This is that baggage for to even be able to receive her. I jokingly say all the time, boy, back in the days I was school, pay, pan to the fucking nick. And she's like, no, you wouldn't know, corny motherfucker. <laughs> and even though I joke, she's right, because I wouldn't even know how to handle a receiver, even though she is a soulmate. Because if I didn't do that in the work, it's worthless. So you may have ran across your soulmate, but didn't know how to receive it because you're not pure of heart. Mm -hmm. Because your heart is not open enough to accept it. Because a soulmate, the opposite of you, is going to challenge you. There's no other point. There's no other point. She makes me better every day. And I'm not just saying that from an episode of, of, of Everybody Hates Raymond. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that because it's, it's not even what I thought I was signing up for. But it is what it is. And I'm going to let her tell you from her own mouth. Because the whole thing, if we're going to have this conversation, I'm not just going to tell you how wonderful I am and save the day. I'll let her tell you. Ready to talk that? All right. <laughs> Some of y'all know me, of course, from hearing panic stories. Some of y'all had a reading from me. And that's what I do. I'm a cold reader. Okay? For those of you that have not had a reading, um, usually what you'll find when you hear about a psyche, someone that does tarot, does the oracle, it's always on a white perspective. So I was always like, okay. Because <laughs> my grandmother used to make us go get reading when we were younger. And I never saw no black boys nowhere. So I saw the need. And I had been hearing spirits since I was like 17 years old, hearing spirits since I was 17. Of course, I thought I was going crazy. This is before any body humans, Phil Valentine's, I didn't know any of them. So as the years went on, um, I just started to, you know, seek the truth like always. You know what I'm saying? And I went through many different phases. Uh, hit up the New Orleans, hit up the Arish. I don't know if some of y'all heard the story. I went everywhere trying to find a belonging. A place, you know what I'm saying? 
And I found that the more I went, the more I started to discuss a lot of things, and here's why. Because as us as a people, when I see us, especially when we're creating, when we're creating, it's like, wow, you know what I'm saying? I see us as, sometimes there's no words for it, you know what I'm saying? So when we are fighting and bickering, and one time I was at a Nawabian, uh, uh, I was decided I want to be an Eastern star <laughs> through the Nawabians. So we go on through these chapters and all that. And the whole time, there was no building whatsoever. The sisters are fighting like, who should leave? I'm like, what? Again? So then I'm hanging out there. I'm trying to give y'all a long story short, OK? So then I'm hanging out the research. I was, I was having a ball the first three months, you know, because I'm learning a lot of knowledge, some of the culture. And that became a mess. So I'm like, why is it I'm going to all these different places trying to find higher spirituality, but I keep finding the same old mess. What, where do I go from here? I had no help. I tried to talk to my mom and they weren't, weren't on what I was on. So I had, it was just me. So I was at the time, I was like, God, you show me what I need to do. So then I started getting to black power. Black power, you know, because I grew up in Denver. And if anybody's been to Denver, you know, there's only a handful of us, a sprinkle of us there. So you hardly see me black faces. If you do, you see them at the club, you see them at the park. So then I started to study Malcolm X 24-7, Harriet Tubman, just get into all, anybody that did anything to, to help us grow, you know, to help us to succeed. So uh, I'm getting into it. The more I'm finding losing <coughs> friends, I'm losing, I'm still not finding what I need. So finally I said, God, you show me. You show me. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm still thinking this is Jesus and all that. So, what I didn't realize is I was going through healing for myself at the time. I had no idea what to expect, what was going on. I just know I was confused, I was hurt, I was angry, and uh, just seeking. So one of the biggest things I, I, I stumbled upon was chakras. Chakras, chakras. I, you know, I was studying it to make sure, you know, become a better human at the time. Get my emotions right. So still continue to study, to study, to study, still not find the answer. So when I finally found the answer, I found out that I myself, I need it. So I started to see the chakras from a different perspective. So I started doing some of the practices that you'll see in the book. Y'all know you'll get some of the books and you start to do the practices. But then I was like, some of this stuff don't work for me. So I started changing a little bit. I'm like, oh man, that's wrong. Let me stick to the book. Sticking to the book, I'm still not getting it. So I said, let me try myself, you know. So I'm trying it out. And I started to see that I'm actually hearing what we call spirits instruct me on what I need to do. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm starting to understand this more and more. Still don't know any panties, no body hammers, no nobody. So of course I thought I was going a little crazy. Still not trusting in myself. So then I started to just, again, just continue to study. So one thing I started to find out is that we, we're missing a lot. Whether we're debating constantly, whether we, whatever we are doing, we're missing it. Like I'll sit down with conscious folks, they're having the same conversation that my parents were having. When I was small, all their house parties, everybody's still having the same conversation. So now I'm saying we're in a time war. So how, what is this time war for you? So I started saying, I started sitting down, studying, meditating, and I figured out what the time war was. All right, so we, we all talk about the chakras and the frequency and how to balance them. A lot of times people speak on what to do, but really when we start to do it, we still confuse and don't know how to truly heal ourselves. So what I learned is, a lot of the teachings that they gave us is everything is external, mm -hmm. external, mm -hmm. external. So if we're learning external, that means my chakra systems, their surface are external as well. So how am I going to raise my frequency? How do I do that? So then I started to understand, well, if we're in a time war, I'm listening to my parents speak the same thing we're trying to speak now. That means that I'm still back here somewhere. You know how they'll tell you to be in the present? And, and usually we in the past thinking about stuff, we in the future trying to get our lives right. We're everywhere but in the present. So I learned that with the, how the chakra systems work, anytime we go externally, we are in like, we're in a time war. And the time war business, our emotions and everything we deal with, our surface is still in the original place where we first got hurt, whether it's the brother, like Max was talking about, the father, our family, <coughs> excuse me, whoever we are dealing with that gave us that first hurt, that first pain, that first rejection. It's still all there. So what do we do? I gotta find the origin and how it became, and then understand what my experience was. And that's where I talk about forgive ourselves, forgive others. So I go into the origin to figure out what it is, so I can grab that energy. So now my frequency, my surface can start to come inwardly. 
You see what I'm saying? So I can raise my frequency. So once the biggest thing in, in this is you first must marry yourself, y'all. Right. And that's <clears throat> and that's the hardest thing for a lot of people to do. Because we're still holding on to and I say it all the time to people, we're still holding on to fear, guilt, doubt. We're still holding on to those three things in everything, especially spirituality. So when we get rid of those three things, fear, uh, uh, excuse me, guilt and doubt, and they get into what we call knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, now we're getting somewhere. So when I started to figure out the first chakra, okay, who knows the root chakra, ground, security, but also knowing that the first root chakra is our village. You know how everyone always asks, where is the village? So that's why we're trying to find that through the wives, through all Orishas. We're always trying to find our village through through the first root chakra. So instead of understanding that I am and where you fit in the village. <coughs> so then I go to the second chakra, realizing that's uh, it's on it's peer to peer, or, or you can say it like a relationship one on one. You see what I'm saying? Like I have my relationship with Hannah, my sister, right? It's one on one. A lot of people will see the chakra as it's you know, it's the money center, it's the creative center, the creative center, excuse me, which it is. However, we still have to get that relationship with, you know, our, our you know, our sisters, our brothers, and see how that's doing. Because most most of the time we'll see people you can't even get along with your family, nor your friends, you know what I'm saying? Just like Fanny just said. We can't even, a lot of women, we can't even get along with other women. You see what I'm saying? So we know there, there's a need there. Then the third chakra, which is the one that I really hold dear. Now you can't really hold one of them, you know, here, but the third chakra is where it's yourself, your relationship with self. How do you see yourself? How do you accept yourself? And a lot of people don't accept themselves. You know what I'm saying? Because they still hold on to what happened in the past. Why isn't their future this way? So we just got a lot of circuits that are externally once you start to heal and how you heal is find the origins and deal with it let it go and then you can start to become spiritual because a lot of people want readings all the time and they're ready to get into this magic they're ready to get into higher spirituality but we got to get our emotions right first you know what i'm saying and the true magic y'all the true magic is our own empowerment you see what i'm saying because usually when we grew up hearing about magic Somebody got hit. Somebody did this. You know what I'm saying? Just, do people do that? Yeah, they do. <laughs> but that, but see, if they can do it, so can you. You see what I'm saying? So the true power of magic, magic is our medicine. You see what I'm saying? But you have to empower yourself in order to get that. So how do you do that? The biggest thing you want to do is, like Candice was saying, through the heart chakra. Because when you're in the heart chakra, that's when your circuits are going into you. So now you can start to raise your frequency. And we're talking about self-awareness. The marriage with yourself. Now Penny can go hang out with whoever you want to. He can, <laughs> he can come home late. What's up, babe? How you doing? How was your day? I have no questions for him. Why? Because any doubts, any guilt, any fears, I got rid of that shit. I decided to trust him and be vulnerable. Now, women, I'm going to talk to y'all just a second. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. Ain't that hard to do? But really, what I have found, really, is not so much find that man that you trust him with everything you're ready to let go of everything you trust him and allow him to protect us allow him to guide us i could feel like a sexy woman as well as feel like a, a small child in his you know in his arms you know what i'm saying so man and i never had that and you know when you get that yeah when you get that when you get that you know it, it was always hard for me to be vulnerable and a lot of brothers y'all want that don't y'all for us to be vulnerable for y'all to be able to say i got this and you know that we can talk about a whole story as to why you know how they designed the, the black man and the black woman. We can talk about that on another day. But <coughs> excuse me. But one thing that I found is clear is that, like he said, I'm gonna be with him for always. I'm gonna be. He's gonna be with me for always. And that's not just because ooh, we want love. It's because I found it in me first. You see what I'm saying? Right. And yeah, trusted sure. in it. You see, and trusted in it. A lot of times when I'm doing people's meetings, there's so many things that come up. The first two, the main two, and some of y'all got to read, and I probably already explained this to y'all. But the first one is trusting yourself in the spiritual realm. So how do you know? Here's the thing, too. Well, trusting yourself and forgiving yourself. Those are the two things that come up from forgiving others. Okay? How do you forgive others? Understand the situation of why y'all encountered one another, why y'all attracted one another. Understand the situation, what y'all taught each other. That's it. That's simple. Once you understand, you got the lesson, you can move on. You know what I'm saying? Understand the lesson, move on. One of the other things <clears throat> is 
And so I was always like, well, how do I know when I know myself? When I started to understand my dreams. How many of y'all, show of hands, understand most of the dreams I have every night? Okay. No, I'm good. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's when I started to understand everything because our dreams are our biggest tools. When we lay down every night, right now we're, we're going back and we are figuring out what needs to be healed. It's like you say, they a mathematical equation. You know how, and you've also mentioned this, let's sleep on it. You hear people say, I'll sleep on it. The next day you got the answer, right? So what I hear a lot of times people are having these powerful dreams like this brother just shared with me. And usually it's something that was bad. They put it in a fearful place. Well, they said, I couldn't do this. It's always, I couldn't, should it, I wouldn't, and why did it happen? Instead of coming from an empowering place. Remember, this magic is coming from an empowering place, right? So when you have a dream, and let's say you, it, was, it was supposed to be scary, or you, you know, you're thinking it's everything but except being a very powerful dream. If you're saying, oh, man, they took something away from me in your dream. They stole your bicycle or something. What's, what's that mean? Does it mean I can't? I can't do this spiritual work? No, it means that that was an old body. Now it's time for you to get a card. And that, you know what I'm saying? It's time now for you to always see it as an empowering position that you're in. You see what I'm saying? Because then your mind starts to change, starts to transform. So, so the more and more you start to transform, the more and more your emotions start to, you start to balance out. So when you get with somebody and find that love that you know we all want, we all desire, we all need, you first gotta get with yourself. You know what I'm saying? How many and y'all please don't be crying. How many of y'all can truly say that you actually feel like you trust yourself and you trust the mate that you did? Lovely. For those <laughs> so that is something some folks feel what? So but to honestly say that, you know, and I'm now what, I'm gonna be forty five in, in uh, August. But uh years of just dealing with a lot of drama and arguing and fighting dysfunctional relationships all because like my baby was saying you fight with the father you fight with the mother you fight with the cousin you still ain't even the president now you're in that time board so you know how we time travel y'all when we time travel time time travel back to a place it's origin like i was saying earlier go back to the origin find out what you understand the situation Bring it back. And when you bring it back, you find it's, you have the understanding. If you still find yourself going there, then there's still something that you missed. You see what I'm saying? And how do you do this? Through meditation. Meditation is all, your dreams and meditation are the most powerful tools for you to get to know yourself, knowledge yourself. Powerful. Why are meditation so important? Who can tell me why is meditation so important? Program your subconscious. Okay, okay. Who else? Silence you in the park, we go. Okay. Who else? Anybody, anybody? Great self awareness. Okay. It's really, I mean, I, I think of it as a part of us as not being used and hasn't been used. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. like you, you skinny as hell, gotta get that muscle cut. <laughs> I mean, the past three true, nights true. I'm having dreams and I know I'm remembering all the feeling. Um. So I cannot remember what's going on. But I know I'm trying to tell myself something. Uh -huh. like, so it just, that's how I feel about it. When I really think about it, it's something I've, I've done. I'm reteaching myself. Right. That's, that's the key word, reteaching ourselves. When we meditate, what we are truly doing is we are escaping what we like to call the matrix. We are escaping what we like to call the matrix. What is the matrix? Going to work. 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 Constantly in the matrix, thinking all those thought forms, and so when the pattern developed, the pattern pack to quiet that down, to quiet that silence, that noise down. So why is it quiet? So we can connect to the spiritual realms. If we are still thinking, we're in the matrix. If we are are relaxing and we are really meditating, we're not connecting. You see what I'm saying? So if we still have a lot of thoughts processes going on, we ain't there yet. You see, I remember my grandma used to make me meditate when I was like 10 or 11 years old. I'm like, Grandma, I just want to play outside. <laughs> I would fall asleep and everybody's outside playing when I wake up. I'm like, Dang, Grandma, what happened to baby? I'm doing it wrong. She's like, No, sweetie, you're doing it right. At first, I didn't know what the hell she was talking about. All I know is I'm going to go play outside. But being able to relax your mind and just relax is where it, that's you're calming down your nervous system, which your nervous system is your chakra system. So, all those plexuses that branch out. 
That's, your, that's all your emotions. And once you can relax, and how you do that? Find the organs. Find the organs. Time travel. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, when, when you truly time travel, make, make it fun. You know what I'm saying? Sit down, make it fun, and see yourself truly time, uh, excuse me, time traveling. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll see these movies where they get in this little device, this contraption, and they go time travel somewhere. All we gotta do is sit down, relax, and go where we need to go. You see what I'm saying? So once we truly understand how our melanin works, because a lot of times everybody in here has powerful experiences. I know y'all do. Everybody does. The, the problem that we're having is nobody understands what's going on. So the more and more you understand, the more you start to self-identify. So understand your dreams. And you'll, you'll see people say, or you hear people say, write them down. You're writing them down because some things that, because the dreams are symbolic. They're not literal, okay? So we gotta understand symbology. Then once you understand symbology, then you have to see how it fits in your life. You know what I'm saying? What do I mean by that? One of the analogies I give a lot of people all the time is the bear. So the bear, to, to most of us, if we all looked up the bear, it symbolized courage, strength, okay? If, sister, you have a dream about a bear, but see, you grew up on a farm and you had, you raised, you helped raise some cubs. I go on a camping trip and I almost get gnawed to death. You and I had the dream, same dream, same night, same time. Is that dream going to be the same? Why? Experiences. Experiences. So not only do we have to understand the symbology, we also have to understand how it pertains to our life. You see what I'm saying? So this is why it's so important to write it down. So when you write it down, if you don't understand it that day, you may understand it the next day, months, so days, months later. And this is all the process of healing. Everything's healing because, again, like I said earlier, your greatest tools are when we're sleeping, when we're meditating, when we're doing well. Also, you get into rituals. You see what I'm saying? But well, whatever we are doing, you know you find this origin, bring it back. You see what I'm saying? So then you can start to get into the heart chakra. And you can have a functional relationship instead of a dysfunctional relationship. You see? And that is something that me and Panic had. This thing can make me so upset sometimes. And you know how you'll be mad at somebody for days, weeks with him? About two, five minutes. You know what I'm saying? So you see how the healing process takes because I'm not holding on to anything. It's not stagnant. So if it's stagnant, you still, the longer you're upset is all the energy that you have blocked in, in those chakras. You understand what I'm saying? So when you release things, all it's doing is flowing. Now the flow of the chakras, and if they don't want to give it back to you after this, um, why is it so important for us to get our circuits back and let the prana, the chi, the energy flow? We know that when we get the energies from the earth, it, the earth, and it goes through the spine, it goes to the heavens, okay? That, that force of the energy, that vertical force, that's our liberation, okay? So now when we are coming from the heavens to the earth, through the crown chakra, down the spinal canal, we are now manifesting. How many of y'all have a problem with manifestation? Anybody have a problem with liberation? You see, so when you know one of the things that I found too um, in my spiritual play, the more and more I started to understand myself, the more and more I became magnetic. Mm -hmm. And that deals with the feminine, the feminine energy. Okay, I started to anything that I thought of, it would come. You know what I'm saying? It would come. So that's another source of how I started to understand I'm healing. <laughs> I'm truly healing because everything I want, it's coming. So the minute you think that you can't get something, that's what it is. The minute you think, so what do they say? So the man thinks, so he is, right? That's again going back to empowering thoughts. I hear so many people that get a reading, somebody hex me. Somebody hex you, okay, if you can say somebody hex you, who was it? You know what I'm saying? Most of the time it's our own thought forms that are causing us to hex our own selves. You see what I'm saying? And if you can say somebody hexed you, then why can't you tell me who hexed you? Like when Panic was saying earlier, we'll say something told me. If something told you, who told you it? You see what I'm saying? I was going to see, what do you mean by, when you say, I'm going to manifest so what do you mean by liberation? Liberation, when you start to free yourself up, the more and more you start to, you no longer think of just on a human level, you start to liberate your mind. 
I know you're sharing your age right now. So, like, for example, one of the biggest things, like when I'm doing meetings or we're in sessions, everybody's feeling liberated, everybody's on a high. But then you go back home and you're having bad thoughts and stuff happening to you. What's going to do if I do this? What's going to Having all these questions, that's not liberation. You have to know that once you do something, let's say you do a ritual, you do some type of candle magic, you have to know that once you're done with that ritual, that it's done. If you keep going back and forth in your mind, it's done. So you sitting here back and forth, back and forth, because of somehow you think that it's, you know, it's rules and regulations that got you regulated. You see what I'm saying? So when we get past all the doubts and the, the, the guilt and all of that nonsense that they fed us for, for over many years, generations, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that this fight is easy, but I'm saying that once you design your own, and here's the key too, like I was mentioning earlier, we can look at a book, and y'all, most of us know in here, you look at a book, you're like, man, I'm not feeling this. If you're not feeling it, that means that you're supposed to do your own ritual, your own remedy. You see what I'm saying? And when you do it, <laughs> you make sure that once you do it, it's gonna, it may be a little choppy, but you'll find your own practice, you'll find your own rhythm. You see what I'm saying? And trust that what you're doing is done. Don't go back and forth. So that's liberation. Manifestation, I know I don't have to explain that to anybody especially being a black man, black woman. You know, they try to make sure that we wouldn't manifest. So one last thing I do want to mention, when, when I also talk about the circuits going out of it, y'all, we got to stop focusing on what the white man is doing. Who gives a shit? We already know what they did. You know what I'm saying? We already know it, but they still continue to try to do. But what, I don't even think about that. The only time I see them on TV, oh, okay. I don't think about no Illuminati and like my baby said, those are empty rituals, Beyonce and them, whatever they doing, that's just empty rituals because it ain't making no changes, no differences. Mm -hmm. Just more money in their pocket, whatever they doing, you know what I'm saying? So why are we focused on it? Who gives a damn what the white man did? Those days is over. It ain't, it ain't gonna happen again. You see what I'm saying? So when we stop tonight and think about them, like, oh, oh, that white man, my thoughts do not go every day. When I, when I wake up, focus on my dreams. What, oh, this is what happened. This is what I learned. This is what I did. This is what I start. I heal almost every day. Because when we balance, that's another thing with balancing, y'all. Balancing is a constant lifetime thing. Balance, all balance is, is once we feel we get comfortable, we start to understand. And then we're going to get into another stage and have to balance that as well. So we start to challenge ourselves constantly. You see what I'm saying? And then we get back to the balancing stage again. So balance is a constant stage. But the true, when y'all know yourself, because that was one of the biggest things I had a problem with. People always say, know yourself, know yourself. Well, damn, how do I do that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How do I do that? So just starting to understand my dreams, understanding my mindset, understanding my heart. That's where it all, that's where it all came to fruition. And it, it, just when you think you know yourself, more and more riches come. I call it riches because the more and more you know who you are, the more and more all this stuff seems so simple. You see what I'm saying? It seems so simple. And to be with the man that, you know, my baby, I find him to be exquisitely intelligent. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> that's the part I wanted to hear. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to drop and, and, and some some people some of y'all might have heard the story I said on the radio when we first met, when we first started dating. And um, one of the things I wanted to know because a lot of brothers and sisters we actually were tuning into, you know, YouTube University. We're listening to lectures. We, you know, we we doing our best to seek the truth and find out what's going on and who we are. But one of the things I started to see is when it came down to true spirituality, a lot of people was actually running away from it. So when I met Panic, he's like, "Oh, I'm going to come with you with me." So I'm like, "Yeah, right. Let's see what he's really working with." Sure enough, that night he came into my dreams. 
and how he came in. <laughs> I was chilling, I was sitting on a bus, he came in, he walked in, and he first, he actually looked like Badu, and at that time, I was really heavy on Badu's music, because that sister lifted up a lot of folks. And so, I was, I saw her, but it was, a sim the symbol was, is I was accepting him, because I hadn't seen his face, really. And so when he came up to me, he started to morph into him. And I was like, oh, damn. I said, the hat and everything that had the dreads fell off, and it was him. And then he made this face. He looked at me, shook me, and he left. And I said, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> and so then I was like, man, all right, panic's the real deal. He's not just speaking about it. He's actually experiencing it. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to meet him. I'm going go to go to his dreams. Man, y'all, I went <laughs> I went to him, and this is when I understood how deep he was and how enriched his spirit was. I went, I was asleep, I was focusing, and then all of a sudden I went and I connected. I don't know if some of y'all, you, you know you connected with somebody. You can feel the connection. And then all of a sudden, I'm going deeper and deeper. I'm like, wait a minute, you know what I'm saying? And I started to, kind of my heart started racing, and, I, and the spirits were like, just calm down, calm down. So I calmed down, and I just rested there with him. But it took me a while. Usually if I connect with somebody, I can pull out pretty quickly. With him, I had to pull out. It took me a few minutes, you know. So I seen <laughs> that I was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so next morning I told him that's exactly what he said. So, you know, I thought Yes, baby, that. So all that to say, y'all, we we are the melanated people. We have profound experiences. Not only we have miracles on a daily basis. It's time for us to now understand it. You know what I'm saying? Trust yourself is the biggest thing. You see what I'm saying? Trust yourself in every situation. And again, I'm gonna say it. If you have this so-called people say nightmares or whatever that dumb shit is, really, which that's one of the best dreams you can ever have because really you have to face something to get rid of it. You see what I'm saying? So your fears, we gotta get rid of fear, doubt, and guilt, right? So you're gonna have some crazy dreams in order to get rid of those images. If say you have a bad dream, should you like try to recreate it through like an afro projection? Basic, you know, conscious and Give me an example of what you like, say, say you have a bad dream, yeah, you wanna go back to that same, try to recreate the same scene if you can remember it, and like, to do meditations yeah. on the program. To try to understand yeah, it? I think it'd be, it'd be yeah. for it. Yeah, if you can, if you okay with it, if you want to try to understand it deeply, heck yeah, I know I do. You know what I'm saying? One, of, let me give y'all an example. One time, um, I was going through my healing phase, and my mother, a beautiful woman, very wise, but she's not into her spirituality really. But she knows more. She, you know, you can have a great conversation with her. She's not an idiot. You know what I mean? So, but one thing she has is she kind of puts herself in a victimized state. You know what I'm saying? She's like she's a victim. So I found myself, sometimes I'm arguing, you know, me and Panic have our disagreements. And I'm like, well, I'm not a victim here. You don't ever make me feel like that. So why is that energy still here? So I'm focused on trying to pinpoint it. I said, ah, oh, it's my mother. I had that energy with her before I was even born. Y'all know how that works. You know what I'm saying? Me in the womb, getting all those, getting those energies. So I fell asleep one night. It took about a week. I fell asleep, and I'm in a cave with my mother. And all of a sudden, this big old octopus comes. And the octopus grabs my mother, so I'm running trying to get my mom, and the octopus flipped my mom horizontally and took her. And then I, I stopped and I said, oh, and I woke up. I said, I finally did it. I got rid of those energies, you see what I'm saying? So that wasn't a scary dream by no means. It's extremely powerful. Now I'm not going to have any disagreements and act like the victim. I'm still a victor in any situation now, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is why it's so important to know our mind, our hearts, because that's how the healing truly starts. That's how it mm -hmm. So is, is it also internality because when you say bad dream, am I saying to myself it's a bad dream? But if it's if it's leading to something good, should I also change my terminology and perspective? Exactly. Of yes. And communicating to myself. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because we were taught all these things are bad. You know what I'm saying? Anything that's spiritual, anything that's dark, like Fanny was talking about, we, we were taught that they're bad. And the way our mind is 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 trying to calculate it is on a human level. When we start to see it symbolically, it changes the game. You see what I'm saying? We start to understand and look into what our higher selves is telling us what we need to heal, what we're about to tap into, what we're gonna get into, what we've been through. It's just, it's all healing. Uh, it's, 
the biggest word we want to say is, you know, what what did you, how can I say this, baby? Um, what, what, this is what I do. What is this? <laughs> what, yeah, like what? What is it that I've been trying to heal? What is it that I'm going through? What is it the questions that I've asked? What? So it's like I investigate myself. You know what I'm saying? And find out. You know, and, and get the answer. Make sense? Uh, I heard uh, Brother Penny say before on the show uh, to put the amethyst crystal under your pillow. Uh, how does that energy from the crystal uh, make you see your dreams better? And, well, I'm glad you brought that up. All right, y'all, here's the thing. I'm going to ask you this. What if you, we didn't have any crystals or nothing was left on the planet? What would you use? Your mind, right? Your mind. So are you basically saying that your mind makes it give you that energy? Definitely. See, one of the things, too, I'm saying you can see on the level. Well, I, I'm going to say the opposite. If the crystals are here, I will use them. They're freebies. She's right. They, they only communicate with things that are in you. So it enhances like a battery, something that exists in you. So the idea ultimately is you to become the crystal. So right. so so I mean that's the old, I mean they become boost. I went through a whole crystal phase and then it, then it became I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Because it's only enhances something that exists inside. And that's an excellent question because one of the things I noticed when I would do my fasting or I would put certain gemstones or quartz crystals I would feel the sensation and I'll get certain signs that I connected. I don't need it any longer. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I'll wear it just for fashion and all that, but you get to a point where you start to connect with it and you are it. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times too now, if we can find some real raw organic stones, because some of these, you know, they clone, everything's grown nowadays, you know what I'm saying? So that's why, <laughs> you know, so if you can find a true organic stone, then most definitely, you know. I went to Arkansas. And I dug this one up. This is so crazy. But this, they got some shit to say. They, they, they be hollering at me and stuff. That's really the real way. Oh, and even when I even when I went down there just a couple of weeks ago, it, it was like it was it was like calling me to dig in a certain area, and all those people were in the same area, and I just went and pulled it right out of the ground. But it, it has so much to say. Right. Yeah, they yeah. talk. They talk. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so what do you do? Don't do it. It's like, I only have like one dream, and that's like, you know, I was younger, my grandmother, she gave me so she thought it was somebody, and she put all this in the bed, and she put like these little snakes in a jar, and she put it like under the mat. So, the only dream I have is if I bring somebody into my life and it's not right, I always have these snakes in So I know it's time to get rid of them, but I don't dream anything else. It's just like my mind is just like, I can go to sleep and that's it. Yeah, the, the reincarnation dream, that's what I have. Yeah. dreams, um, for all dreams are your subconscious mind telling you a story. Because I teach people in class, the first three classes is how to input information in the subconscious mind to change your reality. When the subconscious mind starts talking back, it talks your dreams. That's why you gotta learn how to astral travel, and then that will lead you in something called lucid dreaming, meaning you'll be aware of your dreams. So if it's telling you this reoccurring thing, um, you dream every night. How much you remember is the key. So astral traveling is methodologies for you bringing your consciousness into the astral world with you. It, then your conscious mind and your ego becomes uh, more submissive to the subconscious mind that's telling you a story through symbols. So this is one that's speaking loud to you, you get what I'm saying? But just by you saying, this is the only thing I dream about, that's the definition of why you dream about it or part of it. So you can expand that based upon technique and practice. So your dreams are nothing but uh, thoughts. So first, um, we don't, I'm gonna, uh, bring to the moral of the story, and then there'll be more questions and answers. And I know it's getting late for you guys, but I want to give Khadija yes. an applause. Yes. Is, is it too late to ask her one more little uh, thing? Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. Um, I just wanted to ask you real quick. The, you, you said the um, the energy comes up through you. That's the liberation. And then uh, when you're through the, the, could you speak on the manifestation part? 
the, well, energies, the energies are constantly flowing through us, mm -hmm. okay? So we have, like I was speaking, the vertical forces, and then we have the horizontal forces, okay? So the vertical forces I was speaking with, liberation and manifestation. And manifestation is usually, like I was saying, if, if you, you know, everybody always has an idea of what they want in life, whether it's to uh, enrich your spirituality, whether it's to take care of stability, whatever it is that you want to manifest, you now start to, to, to manifest. But how to do that is you have to do some shock of work. You have to start to clean, you have to cleanse, you have to do that time travel I was telling you. You have to find origins of where they got unbalanced or where they got too much access. You see what I'm saying? So, and usually when you have too much access, it's like, I always think of like the incredible heart, you're doing too much, it's, it's too much of it, you know what I'm saying? So you go extreme with it. And then if it's too less, you get will withdraw. You see what I'm saying? So we can speak on so many ways and how that energy and frequency works. But if you know you're not manifesting like you should or you're not liberating, you know that there's some more work to do. You see what I'm saying? Make sense? Yeah, man. Like chakra, right? Manifest, think it. Every, like the, this is the lowest density, right? So you think it, see it, speak it, right? Feel it, just bring it down yeah, to the it. physical world. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Then, uh, like I was telling my brother, then it gets so good when you can say it and it happens. Right. So what's been happening to me, like, um, especially this week you too, man. I said, dude, I got to be panicked. So I went to New York. I'm in my head. I don't know where I'm going. I said, dude, where brother panic at? Did you say, dude, really? I've been thinking about y'all six years ago, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about y'all so much, and then you came with the uh, the talk shoot, and the first one you had, man, you said, who's in Texas? Yeah, who's right. in Texas? Wow. Who's in Texas? I said, okay, she said, it must be meant for me to, uh, long story short, man. You probably said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. manifest, and then yeah. now, like, if I ride down the street, I'm on the, the X6, I mean, the X, that's what I want. That's what I want, the X6, I'm on the back of the So we are, God. Oh yeah, definitely. That's the <laughs> um, Let me. I just we're gonna we're gonna go into a heavy question and answer. You can do that as long as you guys are willing to be here. But I want to give you all the moral of the story, the, the, the end point, and then the woman. Don't forget your question. Yeah, don't forget your question. When I first got into consciousness, the whole idea was. Uh, even Bobby was telling me, man, what you got to do to keep you a conscious freak. <laughs> I, was, I was searching Black Planet for everybody who was going to be a date. And long story short, I, I, I'm not going to talk to my, call myself in the third person. See, when Brother Panic does this, right, y'all see that on you. See, when Brother Panic does things, Brother Panic does it this way. I'm not going to do that. So, But when Brother Panic became Brother Panic, Everybody started coming at me. So you know what I'm gonna do? What we guys would do? I had a coven of six witches, and it wasn't loving hip hop. They were all cooperative. This is the life. You know what I'm saying? They all went on shopping sprees together. We got new crystals. Oh, come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Party time. You know what I'm saying? I need you, you, and you. It was like I was picking people to come in the club. You, 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 come on in. All right. And then I started to notice nothing was really popping spiritually for me. While all this was happening, Bobby Heaven was like, after all the glitz and glamour, one. He would always tell me the Shiva mythology about one. He would talk about, in the mythology, Shiva was the ultimate conscious guy, basically. She you need to check out this girl. Now, I'm about my business. This is material, this is all this stuff we say in a conscious thing. There's in the mythology, Kama, which is the love god, just like you would. Chinese arrow, she recorded, almost ruined love for everybody. There's all this stuff. And he kept seeing Pravati and going, he's fine, but I ain't falling for him. Long story short, he eventually goes for it. And she she makes Shiva the ultimate husband. You know, he's almost mad. You know, he's doing regularly sweeping up the front. This stuff I'm doing. You gotta pay the lawn guy again? Like, goddamn. Why did you, like, would you put shit on the grass to make it grow? <laughs> like, well, I trim this and I put some weed killer. Fuck the weeds. I like weeds. <laughs> I just, this, I'm like, we gotta pay this nigga Byron again. It's like, I'm the ultimate 
drag the garbage out to the street. I was in New York. I was in New York. I was I was living like a barbarian. You know what I'm saying? Living off the fat of the earth. You know what I'm saying? Just spirituality to die. So here comes this one. Uh, now I'm doing all sorts of saluting and sure, baby, whatever you like. I got it. You want to hold your pocketbook? You know what I mean? Everything. And Bobby kept saying this to me. He kept trying to hook me up with chicks. This is the real, true spirituality. No, 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 no. And he did a tape. I'm a t my spirituality came in off of his love tape. He had his love tape that everybody was talking about. Bobby Hemming talks about love. He said some things that was interesting. I was just studying his tapes. He said some things. He said, he started talking about the stuff he talked about tonight, too. No, it's your love. It's your shockness. It's not her art. She's not responsible. Because that's how we look at our mate. Like, as long as she behaves this way, acts this way, be my idea, she's good money. So when she clashes with my idea, we got a problem. You know what I'm saying? See, it took her even a while when she used to go out on her own. So we're at the movies now, and uh, so I can hear the movie in the background and her friends. Yeah, this is my vacation too. See, catch you later. <laughs> and she, it took a while to realize she didn't have to check in or none of that. So used to this kind of insecurity in it. That's the norm. So I was like, I was past that, but that's something that I'm not going to find with her. I have to really, and you should really come to the table with that. And that's what she's talking about. It's like, you got to marry yourself. I was absolutely, positively in love with myself. Not from an egotistical point of view. I was content in what was within. Not even thinking I needed right. the other half to do it. It was time for me to get the other half. And I left the party to do it. I left the party. We didn't, I, I promise you, there was no dates, no, you need help with your gas bill. It was just like, how you doing? Put your pants down. <laughs> 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 so we couldn't leave that. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to leave that? But something was missing because I was truly looking for balance. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, any guy say, that sounds like balance to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you, what I was, I promise you, what I was living it up. All I had to say was brother panic. And it was like, oh, that's the guy. So I take it off the shirt. <laughs> and so, you know, your ego can go crazy over that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I still was able to keep the ego under control, you know, because I really should have been walking around like John Travolta in Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Struck. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Should have been doing that. But I was able to keep it out of control, but I knew I wasn't being fulfilled. So I left, dropped it off. Ironically, they all got mad at me. <laughs> None of them, they all blocked me on Facebook. Because I put Khadija's picture in my Yahoo. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? I was like, y'all know, y'all used to get girls to me, like, but any love expression was with it. Still all mad at me. None of them say hello and happy Easter. None of that. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened for me was my spirituality went out of this world. Out of this world. Because the other part of me was there. The balance. Bobby Henry used to pester me with this. I mean, you're just a sucker for love. And what you're really doing is actually releasing yourself. It's the ultimate gateway to releasing your little ego that you're holding on to. Oh, that was everything we was dealing with. I want the house like this. My side of the room, yours. All that just now is just like, okay, whatever. Just do it. Just go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and it's not a, a sucker thing. It's more on the thing of I don't have nothing that I need to prove that doesn't exist without her. Nothing exists without her. She's the absolute other side of me, the other extension. So whatever she wants, I want it just by just that. We're still arguing over the new stuff. She wanted that flat shit just because it looked pretty. I do all the cooking. No, no I have to clean that damn thing. Yeah, she's, she's taking all this out. All that oil. I just hope I can hold on. You know what I'm saying? We have a gas stove. I just hold it. 
Just be doing these little things. And then I'm like, there's nothing to hold on to. Why not? I started rationalizing. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not? Because you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you know what I'm needs to be rescued. That's why you see all the day. I'm going to tell you a real science that white people do. Every time we see a scary movie, a white woman's always falling. Ah. We like, look at that stupid white woman. But what they're doing is putting her in the energy of the feminine. It's not that she's weak. It's, 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 the, it's a role we're playing down here. See, the feminine energy represents Earth or the Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. So the prince represents consciousness, that represents the kiss that raises her up. So what I told you when I came to Khadija, she wasn't doing bad with all of herself. But I can tell you now, when I gave her the ultimate freedom to be who she is, without make, she doesn't have to do anything as a man anymore. She doesn't have to worry about the boys, but only from a mother's perspective. She doesn't have to worry about working. You know, all the stuff that, if I said to you, what are you, a stay-at-home mom? People look at you like, oh, oh, you know, you threw your life away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. And basically, I said, I was telling her a long time ago, quit the job. I don't care. Tell her, you know, go in there, say, my butt's yellow. <laughs> 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 I'm good. I got you back. Whatever was going to happen. And so finally, she was able to show me a yellow butt and, and say, kiss it where the sun don't shine. And she walked out. So I can see, but even before then, because a lot of the stress that women have to go through when they're forced to deal with this massive, where they can't manifest and all these things, I was able to relieve it from. Oh, she don't know what nothing looked like. Like I remember we went, it'd like, be movies like spy, stupid movies. Let's see it in IMAX. I'm like, IMAX you be paying fifty dollars. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait till Star Wars come out for IMAX. So, like, I mean, we went to Papa Do's, right? All four of us. So, never looking at no bill. Oh, shit. Like, what is it, baby? It's got to be. I said, well, how much you think it's $80? $80. This is $200. We don't want to order dessert now. I'm like, what? But you can't tell me all the whole story. You can't tell me all the whole story because we first met. You you heard him talk about it. And I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I did that for a month on out when I said, hey, he's, hey, he's balling up now too. Hey, you can't tell me all the whole story. You can't tell me all the whole story. You can't tell me all the whole story. You said, well, maybe we shouldn't do that like that. I had to think about this now. I come home, look. We got to travel. We're going to do a lot of travel. We start in Texas. We need new bags. The budget is. Hundred fucking dollars. <laughs> <laughs> bags at Walmart for hundred dollars. She said, Walmart. Walmart. I don't even shop for Tokyo Walmart, so I just don't like Walmart. Well, I met you at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I met you at Walmart. You me on Facebook. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't go on Facebook no more. <laughs> so. Hundred dollars. I said, look, there's over a hundred dollars. Use your reading money. That's the only thing I got now. Well, you like that? You can do readings. Use your reading money. It's not working, but I'm trying. <laughs> so we go get something to eat. We at the most damn expensive mall in goddamn Atlanta. <laughs> Let's go in here. Give it out bags. I'm like, <laughs> I said. I'm paying $100, and whatever you get on top of that, go crazy, get nuts. <laughs> Long story short, $500 for two bags, you know, one bag set. Well, if I'm going to get this one, I need this, this, and the, but we'll never get it again. And then they give you this logic. It's in season. 
I'll get a bag though. I got I said now nah, I can't have a bag. Talk about your bag. Now guess <laughs> y'all guess how much his bag was. Six or three. <laughs> how much was his bag? Two hundred. He said the budget was one hundred, but he walked out with a two hundred bag. So you know I love how he walk around with, with, uh, he with, with a with a brown paper bag like that. <laughs> 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 and, and I tried because I went to the mall with my son for a fifty dollar bag. Just didn't spin, but I was with it. I, I was like, I was trying to set the precedent. She up in there, this matching the shit. She got all bags. This not three. I'm like, oh god, what did I make? Honestly, oh, what did I make? She don't know what the gas bill feel like. She don't know what the AC be on. So she we ain't even home. The AC is on right now. <laughs> I promise you that. I promise you that. AC is on right now. We ain't even there. We ain't even there. The basement, she has her own room for a spirit room. Oh my god. I'm just like I'm i thank you, Satan. She ain't turn that she ain't been in the mood to turn that easy on. She still took my hair thing. Put it down just like they got to do a thing. But, oh, God, I just got to get, damn, they like, she just rocked it, runs me. But I started getting this, Bobby used to say it all the time, he used to say the lectures about just releasing yourself. Releasing yourself. I have no, you said, I have no ego. When you get tied into the refrigerator and throw from that, you just tell me it's time to And I'm like, but I get the concept that he's trying to tell you because it's it's really you you can tell in this love tape that he's talking about. He was talking about this movie called Adaptation with uh Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage was playing two roles, he was twins. And he talked to this twin brother and says, such and such, you used to like her, such and such. So I really love her. He said, Didn't you know she used to talk about you behind the back? This and that, and say this and say that. He, in Nicholas Cage, said to his twin brother, that was her problem. I was in love. And he said, I was like, okay, I, I know what he means, but I don't get what he's saying. Because all of this is still me. All of this is still hard. Even though we're together, we, we can brag, we still, you know, argue about, hey, why you left that on? It's still, that's going to happen. But it doesn't. That argument in that moment when she was saying we forget it because it doesn't take us back in our chakra system where it's, un, uh, where it's unfinished, resolved results. So we're arguing in that moment because based upon the humanity, hey, you ain't too, then clean the cabinet. You know, it's always hard to you pick up the paint. None of these women showed you shit when you was little. <laughs> <laughs> they just let you do everything. I said, no, they didn't. Call my sister. Oh, nobody showed him shit. Nobody can tell him shit. I'm surprised how you doing it. How are you fucking you doing this? And like, um, yeah, my sister's jealous of it. Like, like, how the fuck is he? How, how did you do it? Like, she just can't figure it out. And that's because I released my ego, and that's the key. And you're only gonna be able to do that through your own work. You will never find a true union. You may find someone you get along with, or manage to get along with, or put up with, but not really address an issue. I don't have to sit and say, I put up with something. I can always address it. I always say, look, you know, when you make the fish sticks, uh, you know what I mean? And she, she won't argue and bellow, but when it's all calmed down, she'll, she'll make an arrangement. She'll say this, you know, I'm the slowest dude. I will argue for my own rights <laughs> to the death. But at the end of the day, when it's all over, she won. She don't know what she acting like. She, she, that's how she manipulates it. But she won. I'm, I'm sweeping more, I'm vacuuming in my spot. Socks got to come up. Stick, you know, all that. You know. I got to tell y'all, too, I've never met anyone that has the most intelligent excuses ever. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've never met anyone. <laughs> Sometimes I just kind of laugh at them and just keep it with me. So I, and then, you know, you got to. But you always coming up with new proposals, <laughs> with new stuff and new projects. I'm like, man, you got, you got a TV, go watch that one. Like, we got the new fire stick. Uh, this is something else to do. Now, but I will say the most power has been when I stopped all the whole mongering and 
thinking I'm doing all this alchemy and just dedicated my work to my heart chakra and the symbol becomes your significant other. And it's not her job to make me happy. It's not her job to make me feel satisfied. It's my job to satisfy myself. So all of this work, to sum all this up in a relationship, starts with the understanding of yourself and you have to evaluate yourself and say, what's my problem? Because if you're not finding a mate or having problems with your mate, you're bringing up something, you're dragging something that you're waiting for her, or you, perhaps you even pick her so she would aggravate this, So because you're still trying to deal with it. So if it's an insecure issue as a guy, you're still, you're picking this one, not that one, because you want her to bring you in this place so you can argue it out and try to find it out. And that only works if you're trying to have an understanding and let it go. But if you're trying to hold on to it so she can satisfy you some kind of way, you're not a problem. See, when we talk to our son, his perspective on women, very respectful, you know, and all the best thing. But when I hear with a girlfriend, no, I don't want that now, I want all my grind and this and that. But I still hear him blocking because he doesn't want to release. While my younger son is, I just want to respect the way. Where is she? Like, he's that guy. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know he's that guy for real. Hey, man, let me tell you what Dylan said. Oh, man, that's what I feel like. <laughs> What's up? You like her? You want to be with her? And you know, really, you know, we allow you. Like, that's so bad. Like, you know, oh man, I talk about this in class a lot. And we put him on blast. He was young, you know, and he was telling us one day, I'm like, dogs, man, we, oh, we gave it to him. And, oh, no, 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 no. Next day, he said, Jay is my girl. I said, look, we still have a key. <laughs> but he went through hell and high water for this girl. Yes, he did. so bad that Deja said, see all these pretty girls out the more Torin should be fucking them. <laughs> Mama said, I'm sorry, you did it in the kitchen. I'm sorry. And your mama says it is bad. You know what I'm saying? He just felt he was so loyal. His heart is. I've never met nobody this loyal. He's so loyal. Like, we like, why do you like her? I don't know. She's just an underdog. Like, <laughs> not, 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 not. So you have compassion for her, but you're not in love with her. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's an underdog. <laughs> oh my goodness. It got so bad, we had to do rituals. <laughs> All right, let me go to the store and get this, get some beer, put her clothes in a bear. They call her a J bear. That said, we ain't gonna try no more. He was gonna put it on his grandfather's altar and let him tell him. He immediately told him, he just let him go and say that we're gonna watch. So we stopped. We joined the party. Sure enough, she got that job at Burger King, she turned into Diana Ross. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know. Like, we took her to a party. And I told her, you watch me, she come around that corner, watch her weed. That Burger King job had a wild up. So I knew she was going to act like more. Because he ain't got no job. He's still eating my turkey burgers. So all he got to do is come to the house and watch a movie. Now she ready to go to the movie. You ain't got no money. I'm like, watch this. So sure enough, it's getting shaved. And I remember I died. <laughs> like, no, I came in, I, I was sitting, I wasn't even trying. But I said, just woke her up. She always had problems with her mother, so I'm telling her, just regular human advice. Well, you may not want to look towards your mother. She will never give you what you need. It's time to buy your own. You got your Burger King, go ahead. You know, a room make it, right? But I know. <laughs> you know, like, um, so, short enough, she looks, she came in on the cast, they both come in. I'm already arguing with her because I teach them a science. Take turkey meat, make burgers, put them individually wrapped, freeze them. That means we don't have to walk with yours, got something to eat. So that's his. So I'm like, yo, you took waste and put it together. So he's around the house saying, look, cut it, cut it. Doing all the stuff right now, making these burgers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she's talking to me. She's like, I said, well, you know, move in with him. I said, yeah, I'm sitting about 
I said, so who is he? This nigga's leaving? I said, he got the good. <laughs> Make <Maybe> the <both. laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I said, he got one of anything, and he's got the basement. I said, he live in the basement, and we ain't put no pressure on him. I hope he stays till he's 45. Somebody's got to get the garbage out. <laughs> Somebody's got to sweep around here. I don't never want him to leave. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 so I said, you think he's going? She had the realization. She got brand new on him. You know, he called. Why he calling me for? I said, oh, that's when we ended it. Because he was, he didn't love her. He was trying to be loyal to us. So when she did that, it's over. Now, you worry, boy, when you come back, she's still going. Oh, he got, he got sassy with us. He said, oh, you're kidding. I'm for you. We're going to make him think. This is it. You know what I'm saying? But well, we're going to give him a week. He, he'll be crawling back in a week. I need my braces tightened. You know what I'm saying? I'm like fake rich. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> My braces, this is too much stress laying in my friend's house. You know what I mean? So we knew he'd be back, which he was. Of course, Jay called the girl. You want to come live with me and get married, baby? <laughs> I said, you, know, you ain't that desperate in a week. You know what I mean? You ain't that desperate in a week. You know what I mean? And uh, ultimately, ultimately, this work to have to find the true work, a mate, and even if you with your true mate that's with you through some of the fog, the work becomes uh, inner work. It's, it's, a, it's really about absolute trust, but that's what the heart is. Absolutely trust, absolute faith and commitment, all those words that Jesus said. You have to find that inside. Absolute trust, absolute faith, absolute commitment, absolute compassion for when the humanity comes out. But you cut your toenails in the tub for I forgive you. <laughs> I forgive you, my sister. If <laughs> well, hey, hey, you, 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 you put the toe in the seat down, I forgive you, my sister. Your total in the heart is you that's really doing this. And Bobby used to say it to me all the time. You won't get it until you go through it. And you submit to it's not really submitting to her. It's submitting to you saying, I release. I release. And you're going to be the one that I'm going to release myself to. Everything I do, she'll tell you. I'm not going to just dictate. She'll tell you. Everything I do is, is the sun rises and sets around the nation. And that helps release me. And she does the same thing. Oh, my God. She does the same thing. Oh, my God. Like, I started just calling her mom. Okay, mom, no problem. I'll back you. Like it's just like she'll do everything. She'll do every sentence I do. She'll tell me, no, he said that. Do that. Go get that. No, we're in gate T six. I'm like, well, can I, I'm still a guy. Can I look at the ticket and look at the board just to see like I'm doing something? What did I say when we walk in? Did I say it was right here? Go up the escalator. I'm like, oh, okay. And I get it. You know what I'm saying. Because what I be, that's bringing out something primal in her as a nurturer, as a, as a warrior, as a protector. She protect that. She, you know, she, we seen this junk car, this this porter car out here. So, so there was, this guy got out here, had all this shit on his ass. So I'm like, oh, that's one dirty ass nigga going to get left. And she's like, no, he was working hard. Then we got a spot. I said, no, that nigga's a whore. Look at this car. He said, shit, nigga, if I was a hand, y'all niggas would be living like this. That's normal shit. And you know it's bad, but you can't really deny it. You're right. You know what I'm saying? She don't say nothing. You should see the cash room. That's my lamp. Chilling like hoarders. <laughs> hoarders in systematic underwear on the floor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Terrible. Guys, I know it's getting late. So any questions on what we talked about? And we, we'll, I'm just opening up the Q and A. So we'll, we're going to get out stay forever. <laughs> so if y'all can stay, I can stay. As long as they don't take us out, we're good. But um, we're going to get to everybody. But any questions on the left? Anything you felt that left out? Okay, I won't, I'm going to get to you, brother. I just want to get. She's been raising her hands. I want to know first two questions. He's a first teacher. Okay. Yeah, uh, first I, uh, first of all, I would love either one of y'all can answer the first one, because the second one is more, it's, uh, can a person have, like, be whole within themselves and not require a soulmate? 
Yeah. Um, I'm more on this on this path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then the next one is when we do have that something and we become intimate uh, sexually, is there too much? And can you like too give out your life force? Have a sex? You know what, what you mean? mean? I'm gonna elaborate on too much. I mean like all the time, ejaculate. You know, uh have it or that. Can they like uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. The life force thing is it's over the men, right? Ejaculate. Ejaculate men, uh coming women. No, women. Oh, women are oh, black holes. Yeah. Ain't no ain't no kids out there. Like, what guy you know is like, yeah, I wore you out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wait, wait. <laughs> what's, sister, what's your name again? I'm sorry, Trinity. Trinity, that's another form of our healing. So we, you release it. Every time we thought we release it. So that's that Lord Chakra when he's speaking of releasing. That's with that connected. No, so like um your mentality towards sex. This is something I teach in class too. The intention is everything. Because intention, what are the reasons we have sex? Give me two intentions. No. So your intention, your intention is make the difference. So if he just has a lower chakra agenda about you, oh look at all of that, you know, all that junk in the trunk type thing. You can't see nothing above your head. Let's just say that the intelligence, your mind, your compassion, or whatever. Uh, he's the one giving out his energy. You know what I'm saying? He's the one giving out his energy. But when you're great, see, see, you hear the physical representation of ejaculation and bring up the hell. All that's crap. All that's nonsense. That's a physical way that's supposed to lead to a spiritual way of how to bring it. Because what the energy is on sperm is something called solar phallic energy. That's the light that actually gets in the prep. So then what you're really supposed to maintain is your solar phallic energy. I've been tapped into that. So because your testicles make sperm all day. You know, who cares? You know what I'm saying? That's easy. So it will do that, but if you're releasing that soul without energy because you don't know how to maintain it, you didn't have a problem. And that's really spiritual. Now, the Montauk Chi and them show you how to uh, cultivate feminine energy and cultivate masculine energy. So there's ways to do that. Y'all can do that with each other. But if I'm going to lose my energy, better for that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just a good one. But doing it more than no, because really, you can, if he's giving you the energy, let's just call it that. The feminine is the gateway. Your lady parts are the gateway. So by activating it, by activating it with the man's key. There's some kids, are the kids I'm playing? Out because okay, it's okay. Yeah. The, the, the key, it will actually do your intentions. You can pull anything, that's a way to manifest. Remember, she told you the circle? When you become a man and woman together, the energy now starts to circle. That's that's the true union of that manifestation of friend and transcendent. So it's your energy based upon his intention. So if I just want to hit him and split, I'm just I'm just dumping my energy and my legs get me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're uh, in a union, you're cultivating that energy. And there's books on it, Montage She has cultivated the feminine or the masculine energy. So tantric sex is what you may want to study a little bit to cultivate or keep or hold it on to the energy to keep it circulating and make it useful for you, as opposed to just hitting and splitting, which is what we're not talking about here. Ecstasy through tantric. Uh, Bobby used to write that. Yeah, the book. Ecstasy through tantric. Yeah, right. Um, I have two questions. Okay. Um, can you can you reach Christ consciousness without uh, non mental Um, perhaps. I I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But the master is going for a path. You know, so I see you walking the path. Right. So I would say you may have tapped into some energy. Like my son, I was telling you about. Oh, that boy is born Christ consciousness. He don't know me. He's still stealing my weed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when I'm trying to meet him, and you just really sit down and talk, you will never meet nobody. And I'm not just saying this. You will never meet nobody like this on the planet. 
It's almost scary. We don't want to let him out the house. Because he's going to get mugged and raped. <laughs> he was too nice. He told me a story. And I was walking home. And this guy just came in the car and honked. When I ride, he <laughs> not walk away. I'm like, oh, when he tells me the story, I'm like, oh my God, just stay home and just, I'm going to hug you. He just said, oh my God. He had a friend who got killed. He was actually crossing the street. This was in number one. This really affected him. Still affected him. This was this, was two, this year? No, yeah, last about year. Four, four, five months. Four, five months. Four, five months. And, you know, I'm mean, a special dude. And Thomas came in the spirit world, so I tell him. He's a Christian child. I didn't even put that together. Christian child, rainbow child. I looked that up, you know, because I really didn't care. And man, oh man, I'm like, oh my goodness, did he just read this? That's why we need to be learning from him. His forgiveness, his, his sin. So if you were to define him, you would say Christ consciousness, but his humanity, he's still going through the, the, the road. So what's in his heart is natural, but it seems like he would need to get under a practice for him to really elevate and walk His natural reactions are what we would say, wow, that was real compassion. That was real perspective. He's, he would look out for everybody in here. Everybody say something, all right, all right, like, it, like really be that dude. It's, it's amazing. It's like almost amazing to watch. So I can see that energy is in his heart, but it could go in either way. You know what I'm saying? With neglect, it just didn't look to you with another, another dude. So I would say to truly achieve Christ consciousness, you need to know some concepts of, of, of first and foremost that you're supposed to be Christ conscious. That's what you think there's some well, yeah, I think I've been in a group to like alchemy, alchemy, right. right. you know, different uh, approaches have different ways of getting to that Christ consciousness. Right, there's many paths. Um, yeah. If they're not calling it the chakra, they're still calling it the attributes of the heart, you know, your know, compassion, and, 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 and yeah, like a Kuan Yin becomes compassion and all the rest of these things. Turn, uh, the Bodhisattvas uh, deal with so much compassion work that they turn around and become Kuan Yin, based on So the attributes are always the same. It's always this game right here, gateway, heart, you know what I'm saying? It's always this game. Uh, uh, we say Christ consciousness because everybody knows Jesus, so it's easier to say. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, everybody knows, though. Right, right. Exactly. And so it's easier to say, remember when they said this? It meant that. But, you know, uh, Krishna, uh, Indra, uh, Vishnu, all of these, uh, uh, I'm missing up. Uh, there's a book called uh, 16 Crucified Saviors, which he actually made a story too, with the same Jesus story, the same Christ story, you know what I'm saying? Marduk, and all of these savior figures that are Christ consciousness. So we're just calling it the crystals and all the rest of that stuff, but actually, it's actually just an understanding that's in a lot of mythologies and a lot of cultures. Hercules, uh, Jason, and Argonauts, all of these guys are, are these heroes. Aru are actually Christ consciousness. They're actually telling you what they're fighting is human ignorance or the demon. It's human ignorance. So all of them are Christ consciousness. We just say Jesus. Because it's not one thing, but it's a worldwide understanding of Christ. Shit, Eddie Murphy is Christ. My yeah. second, my second question is uh -huh. the guys that that's, that's making the movie. I mean, it seems as if they are just approaches. Um, how 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 do you break that those, those that mind um, according to uh -huh. being right. you know time of landing. Well, I talked about this before. All script writing that ever existed, never will exist, exists, is also template mythology. So to be a script writer, you have to study mythology. So most of what you're seeing is just using the principles of mythology to tell a story. Because they know that's how a true story is told. So they may not be profoundly deep, they just may be sticking to the script. I've seen plenty of movies that have led in nowhere. There's a movie called Selfie. Uh, but the dude that played uh, the torch when he started the torch in the same passage. And in that, he uh if you do the whole shocking system of this dumb, ridiculous movie about a cell phone for very little time, so stupid. But all it, it was not a cult, but what they were doing 
was trying to say, we understand psychologically that people, even if they don't know it, follow this path. They understand. So when we do it, it makes sense. So we look at a story and just say, I like that story. It makes sense. Because they're saying, I'm following a mythology or a path, but not really trying to do that sinister. And then there's the ones that do the sinister who are a cult. Because they, because if they're in the script writing and the rest of that, they have, some of them are focused that high script writing and say, take that out, put that in the director to do that. You know so no, this Hollywood is the biggest cult scene, no doubt. But everybody ain't on the same page type of story. So, uh, like, I, I, I told about it before, there was a movie called Play Up with, uh, uh, what's that, Tim Robbins, his white boy. The white boy who was in um, the Short Shank Redemption. Now, he's in a movie called Play where they're showing how scripts and movies are made in comedy. So, for instance, I gave the theory based upon this movie of how they really did it, the all star cast, how. They say it's a uh, Hollywood movie company, like MGM or Fox, they only make like six, seven movies a year. You can see in all the Hollywood, that's why it's consistent, but you see it for six, seven, eight years. So they are saying this year, you want a movie like uh, 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 Collision Movie. So that's what the big heads say. They say they start bringing the scripts. The motors start saying, I want to do it and then when they get the script, they are looking for the script that the boss is already doing. Let's say the boss is going to be The boss is already saying, we want this, we want to put this out. So they don't know the agenda anything. They just know they're looking for a type of script. So then they go, we want a type of script where it's all another the plan. They got no other I come to the and I'm trying to So you look at the script of James Cameron, and that's what called Avatar. And they're saying, okay, this is kind of what we're looking for, the storyline, but we need to be changing the script. But the focus is that's the top thing. They're going to have to They're really handling the agenda. So this guy just already had a script that was already in the game. So he's Rewriting, rewriting, third right, fourth right, and they got it where they go. So they film it, they said, you know what, that film do that, make Jake Scully do that, and this and that. So they're kind of tweaking it to a place where it's what they want. Mm -hmm. And so the occultists knew the agenda, but all the subordinates are just trying to get paid. Mm -hmm. All the subordinates are just trying to get, follow what the company wants. Mm -hmm. And then sure enough, you have an occult movie without the whole man to know it. Or better yet, maybe James Cameron does know. Or maybe Robinson Zemeckis does know. But you can watch right now where they decode Back to the Future. You know, and they show you all in 1985 when this was created that they were talking about 9-11. But then I'll do one better. When Rockefeller put it up in 1969, he took a picture on Newsweek magazine with a watch that said 9-11 mm -hmm. in 1960 something when he put that shit up. Mm -hmm. So while we think oh, they just did that in Bush and them, you know, they had that shit planned since 1960 something. Now you I now I we won't go into it, you can do that with the follow up right at the right time to do things. The follow is path order. So it takes you on each path of when's the best time to do whatever. And that's all it was. Zemeckis not even showed that this was so sinister. The movie's about 2015 and Back to the Future. He shows Donald Trump running the, running the world in Back to the Future 2. That's what Biff was supposed to be playing. He shows Marty McFly keep going back when Doc's putting up the wire for, for, for the tower. I got something to tell you about the future. I got something to tell you about the future. Then in 2015, Robert Zemeckis does a movie called The Wire, showing what the dude had on. The outfit was the same thing Marty McFly came back from 2015 with. They showed the buildings crumbling and in all of these words, four or not in 1985. So while we're thinking, we want some hot, we got the Illuminati. 20 years ahead in what they got planned. So, you, so in other words, you ain't gonna even get into their stuff. You guys don't even worry about it. 
You need to get into your stuff. <laughs> you need to get into your stuff. Yeah. All right, any more questions? Y'all looking like I'm going to wear y'all I told y'all I was going to wear y'all out. Y'all going to go home and get in the bed and eat right to I'm going to be there. So, can you explain to me what death means to you? And also, what system gave you the greatest understanding of death? Yes, sir. I'm going to say the system. All right. Trina, I'm going to say girl. Everything I told you tonight, 
and killing off your humanity to the point. Panic is dead. I'm this dude now. We were about to. Okay, bags. I'm that dude now. I'm no longer. I ain't no damn bags for that much. Better go, better go to this Spence or whatever. But that guy is dead. The guy who was the bachelor in New York is gone. That's going to be God. And I'm finding now that that's the dark side. The dark side of the tree is called the liberal, which has 11 symptoms, which are the 11 polyps. Which are the 11 polyps. Bob has been talking. That's a business over the this Bobby been talking about the Apollos with the eleven Philippians. So these eleven that was in is now he you say I'll bring him to the light. The dark is supposed to become the light. That's what he was talking about. So the dark side of the light, Crowley Orange. I'm gonna tell you how powerful the Philippians is. I got this talk to him. There's a guy named Ron Marlowe Duquette. He's one of the white guys that say, Yeah, this is the Nick Rose. So on John Anthony West, you'll see him. His books are amazing. He's excellent at explaining complex concepts and uh, making them plain. So he's on Facebook. So I'm like, they don't never talk to me and I don't even care what this is about. So I got him on this Bloom show and I just did the, you know, the puppet thing. Ask him that, tell him that, ask him this. So while he's going, I asked him, can you explain it a little? Like, his words were, you know, I have so much hard time with the front of the tree. I don't want to deal with that. It's, it's just too much. And I said, all right, whatever. Because I'm talking about me. He didn't say, you don't know nothing about me. Like, I'm going to have to build your head. I said, he said, that nigga wrote a book on the political. I said, what? I said, he's Bobby said, he, as an author, he's not. He either is too powerful. He don't want to keep the liability. Or he just don't want to tell black folks what it is. That's what he really does. Me playing with all of this in the light, and I'm a light bringer. They go into the sources. That, and that's the, that's the concept of death. Death is not just when the body stops. It's actually killing all, or killing parts of you. Constantly. You should be doing that constantly. You should be new every moment that you find something new to renew yourself with. That's a form of going through the dark. That's what the entire thing I'm talking about today. You must face the dark side. Another way of saying that is going through the dark, going through the gateway. You know what I'm saying? Becoming Lord Vader. And then above that, like I said, they are twins. Those twins became Google Laura, and then he was dead. Another way to look at that is Kepha represents the number one. As you go down, it comes to Mount Kuhn, which is 10. One plus zero is one. So this in the Bible is Mary Magdalene the four, and Mary the Virgin. So when Crowley would talk about the sacred four and, and the divine four, these were concepts he was trying to say. A woman, and it's really the black woman, in her most poorest state, it is actually the smartest. Like you think it cool. Because if you think I'm playing, any fella going there and sitting trying to match wits with a stripper. You both coming home trying to explain to your woman, guess what had happened though? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or a prostitute. They, you, they'll show you on TV how they know how to work men and manipulate you. You watch any of your documentary. I'm a documentary free. I watch everything. They'll show you how they scientifically can manipulate men on levels. You think you the ball. You think you throwing the dollars and you got the night. But you throw your money at them all night. And they'll, they'll know how to look at you, nurture you, talk to you, make you feel you the one. You be trying to buy them a house and all. They the masters at it because in knowledge ways, social ways. Your daughter come home. I'm getting a poll. You about to, you about to, you about to get intelligent, son. You're not going to do all of that. You're going to want to stop her. But the reality is, the reality is, we all came to do this work. We all came to do the work. Yes, sir. <laughs> Alright, 
Everything was love, love, love. They became black people. So this also tells you they, they came from us. Right. It came from us. Just their evolution ain't got nothing to do with what you got. We shouldn't be worried about it. We shouldn't inspire it. We shouldn't do it. Nothing here was saying. Pretty much do what you do. The problem is they in our business. You let them in grown folks' business. They should be about their business. Yes, sir. Do you have any um, new book recommendations? Because uh, probably the two most powerful books I came across that you know, Psychomancy and all the clip off stuff. That stuff works fast. Yeah, like, you have any is an out of print book. Like, I found it years ago. People said, I kept talking about it so much. People said, You need to sell this. So I've been selling this PDF for years. You know, they take the class with a free copy. But it's done in the 60s and and unlike these punk books now, you know, karma will come back and do that. He's like, man, I'll show you how to see a woman neck in an x-ray, and she won't even know. You know what I mean? You're like, whoa. And he's telling you all technique after technique. Ironically, they did these techniques in a movie called The Master. The C, C, uh, the C. Philip Hoffman, I think. And then Joaquin Phoenix, the, the dude that was in Gladiator. They did a corny movie called The Master. And she's like, She's doing straight out of cycle, man. She's like, look at me, my eyes are blue. My eyes are blue. He said, seen as green. And really, that's the technique. If your eyes are brown, am I able to see them as blue? That's all you're doing. That, and that's what I get to my class. You're not doing that. That's complex. You're using your mind to create whatever you want. And so he shook, like, in cycle, man, they'll tell you things like, see that dot on the wall? Pull your eyes, turn around, try to touch that dot. Get your eyes closed. And all you're really doing is exercising that part of you that's that's going to uh, incorporate or energize psychic energy. He tells you how to energize the five senses. That's seven to seven to seventy-two to each part of the body, which becomes the three sixty the full illuminated man, Solomon, the temple of Solomon becomes this. That's all Baphomet. That's all of my blood. I go through all the magic of seventy-two. Y'all won't get enough. Of how 72 shows up. And that's really 72 chakras on the pioneer, minor wow. chakras. The name in the Goetia are the names of each of those chakras and characteristics. To deal with them is activating just different parts of your chakra. And Crowley and them named them, never was able to tap in. They ain't have the juice. Y'all do. Yeah, so you have to all of that in the book. All of that. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And I know the brother. He has another book out too. Called Yeah, he's got more books. It's hard to get his books, but his name is Frank Rudolph. So if you see Cyclomancy or Frank, the author Frank Rudolph, anything you can get of his, because his books was from a time when it was all about technique, the yoga books, and so on and so forth. That Cyclomancy is probably the best book I've ever read. Yes. Like, yeah. I've had women really call it like you've been on my mind. Like what? Like, I mean, I yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 when I was practicing this, all I did was on the New York City train. I just, you know, he'll tell you the first thing you need to do is find a happy word. So he would say, like, stay. He was telling, like, Marilyn Monroe, Clark Gable, this is where the book was from. It was into them. So my happy word was press, visualization. So all I used to do is sit on the train and see if I could make a nipples rise. I said, I'm going to see her panties before she goes to sleep. I'm going to make him sleep. I'm going to give the Jews itching attacks. It was a way to send energy from your genitals up your spine to the back of your medulla oblongata, store it, and shoot it out. It teaches you that. Cyclomancy. I still sell it at PDF for 50 bucks. Online, is a thousand or something. You can see it for yourself. That book. So PDF, you can always just email me. It's not on my site, but if you email me, you go to my website, you don't know it's a cult lectures. Or if you just Google Brother Panic, you'll find all my information and get it. If, if, and I hope you, you gotta have, we need a code or something. Without you going to discount it, is that the election? But everybody goes, how is that the election? That is on tape. I'll let the election. So I don't know. Y'all approved to me. I said, oh yeah, use that. Well, they were at the election. They lost the election. They were at the election. Oh yeah. What's the name okay. of that book that he did? Uh, I can look at him. He's yeah, a cycleric, but anything by Frank Rudolph. Do you have any, any got yoga book? Yeah. Like cycleria or something like that, where he talks about the actual energy in your spine. 
So what you know is that there's an energy point in your spine and how to activate it, blah, blah, blah. Just real hands-on how to do stuff. Another good book by Robert Bruce is Astral Dynamics. That's going to show you a step-by-step -step on how to astral travel, how to do your things, what it is, how you leave your conscience behind, how to bring it up with you. Back in. I want you to just say uh, on that relationship. What do you do with the, like, the, like the, that God has more of the feminine energy and you have more of the masculine energy? Like you're actually, 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 like you're I guess that's what you would have to discuss with him. Y'all would have to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, it depends on what you go. You do with ritual, but you probably want to talk it out with him. And and there's something that may be blocking him from really spreading. Oh, he may just not be like that. You know what I'm saying? He may just be the guy. But that's really nothing I can say. Here's how you do that. But that's really between y'all. So that's really something. Of a, if y'all came together, you feel y'all should be together. And that's a, and then maybe that's what y'all here to figure out. Because really, I still feel that me and these together, we're still here figuring stuff out. And I figured out lots about myself. God, man, that's why I always do that. But I'm willing to learn. So it, it just becomes if he's willing to learn or willing to evolve with you, and if you're willing to evolve, you know what I'm saying? Or willing to accept stuff, it's, just, it's really up to you. So I don't know that to do this or do that, and I'm going to preach. It's really just up to you, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, y'all feel balanced, maybe that's why you're together. Because he may be saying the same thing to his friends, you know what I mean? She's a little bit uh, aggressive or whatever. But I guess, you know, you have y'all talked about it? Yeah, I mean, we talk, he's open to it, and he knows it about himself, but it's just good. Yeah, some, some guys like that. You know what I'm saying? Some guys have a more feminine tip, but it ain't, there's no real sugar in the tank. It's no, just, I mean, just, he's a yeah, guy, guy, he's just, right. that, yeah, like, girls, just that attitude yeah, that you like, right. you cut everything. Right, he just got that little, he, 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 he has that feminine energy that shows out. I mean, the only thing I can say, take some t testosterone to it. You know what I'm saying? Take, you know, go get some of them and see that, you know, helps out. I know, you know, it's just really, y'all got to find that way. But really, I'll tell you what Bobby Hammond was saying this morning. Did you love him before? <laughs> yeah, ain't nothing changed. You know what I mean? It's like a heart. It's a heart. It's a heart. You know what I'm saying? So I guess it's like, is he worth it? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because she's worth it where if I have what's in my mind, it'll be just me reflecting my sicknesses. My um, insecurity. She does exactly what I need her to do. No challenge. You know what I'm saying? I need her to be in the bed by nine o'clock. She does it because, in my mind, that's reasonable. So, if she gets in the bed by ten, then we go. Should we change that? Should we work on that? Or should I accept it? Or something like that? I'm gonna say, oh, I'm gonna accept it because what we have and what we are are more important than these little nuances. You know what I'm saying? So you would have, I would really say, what's the first thing? What is what is a man? And why do I need him to be more of whatever? So if, can I just say, be more of this, and will he try? As opposed to everyday routine of stuff that don't matter. You may say, well, I don't like the way he do brush his teeth too much. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I can let that one go and just say, well, look, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I need you to smack it, flip it, rub it down, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, and why don't you try that for the night? And if he goes, I don't know why that's not me, just say, you know what? All you gotta do is pretend. Pretend. What would you do? What would you think someone would do like? And see if he's willing to, you know, play around, work with you wherever the place you see. It's really up to y'all. It's up to him. And sometimes you gotta say, this is either who I got, and I'm not here to change one person. If this is who he is, then I need to say, am I, should I be here, or should I accept it? And I can change it. Unless he's willing to evolve this. I'm sorry. Did you question? Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about um, what we gonna do to change. But like, like, what's the next move? Like, like, okay, like, it, like, 
Like I, this, this is my company. Like every day, I want to bring change the world. All this new technology, new form. I'm in schools teaching kids new technology and agriculture. But what we gonna do? Who we do? Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Louis Farrakhan, T. D. Jakes, all them boys out. Okay, y'all got 500 people. The market, what you look at a game? What mission did y'all leave them on just for a rank up? What we gonna do? We nutrition, whole food, you know what I'm saying? We black people. We ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah. 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 I was telling you, the uh, what we have gonna do is yeah. exactly what we do. We're gonna bring the world together. Yeah. 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 Y
perspective of they said, you know, I'm done with trying to figure this out. Yeah. And I want to figure out who and what I am. Yeah. And so I speak okay. to that. And ironically, when you find out who and what you're in, all this stuff becomes a sitch. You don't get carried away in emotion. Yeah. So most people are carried away in emotion because this is what these images are designed for. Yeah. So it, it's really a process of one level of thinking and then moving into another step. So I don't have the answers to how to send kids. I'm not even interested. I'm more interested in saying they're growing as parents who are more dumb than that. You know what I'm saying? So and that comes through get, getting people to understand things that they can do themselves. It's self-realization. So it's more self-realization. It's not going to cure the world of um, uh, uh, the earth's problems, but then again, I'm not here to do that. You know what I'm saying? There are people who are here to do that. They'll tell you how to get a diet and an economic plan. Those are the people who speak to that. I speak to the part of when you're saying, I'm done. I'm done trying to figure out how to march, how to eat, what I'm going to do better. And I, now I, I, I got to do like my life. I just don't know. I got to do my life. I respect your mind. I respect your mind. That's why I'm here. Because what I see in everyone's black divine mind is I know better. Yeah. Or it's a matter of studying the methodology. Yes, sir. I want to give Your subconscious mind knows. It's the knower. So 
you, you have to say there's no new thought under the sun. There's not. It exists in you. Akasha deals with past, present, and the future. Your subconscious mind is the path of your Akasha. So you tap into knowing. You may have read all of these particular words. I read some of it, got the science, and all of that is from the mind. I don't know if you're writing nothing down. I said, I don't know what you're going to talk about. I know the framework, but oh, I'm filling up. Hours and hours. Like your feet, y'all gonna start taking off your shoes and You know what I'm saying? I feel it with hours and hours because I know how to speak because I raised up that part of knowing. That's the first lesson you give in my class. How to enlighten that part of you that knows. So something that's happening naturally that you know, I guess you would get in my class and get the science and the methodology to keep expanding on that. You know what I'm saying? But it's not happening randomly because all of these deities represent knowing. And let me tell you, just because we said Oshun and a few of them in the night, I got books that in class bigger than your head, a pantheon from Malaysia, Indonesia, Papa to Panasia, a whole system of things that y'all ain't never heard of. I do it every time in class. Let's go random. Kapa Bonabu. <laughs> Prosperity, protection, utility, and then they'll give you iconography. There's a horse, got this, represents this. So I tell you, you have food. Colors, animals, uh, images, days of the week, all about one thing you've never heard about. And I'll show you how, what I call, how to self be applied in class. And how you can become that image. So I don't ask Lakshmi for prosperity, I just became Lakshmi for that. Cut it to the chase. So I show you how to deify yourself, which is the true way these images, how to become these gods. So I'm not going to walk around like this in space, but. The alchemical transformation of me is fucking amazing. And it's the same, y'all have to access to the same shit if you do the actual work. I told you earlier, you can have sex for creation or sex for busting the nut. When y'all are studying, y'all just having fun busting the nut. I'm going to show y'all how y'all are supposed to do the study. Y'all will study based upon the implication. So I don't, I can tell, I've read and dealt with and deified myself for hundreds if not thousands of years. Ask me to repeat it, I don't know. See, because you think in study I'm supposed to be able to memorize, but let me tell you science on the side of son, and, and, and be able to drop it over here. It's coming with jewels, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> then you can drop this. <laughs> son, like, no, that ain't it. I, I, I internalized them by reading it for self deification hit it and forget it. Because if I remember it, my conscious mind starts to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So that's why when they tell you to sit you draw your scissors, you do your meditation, whatever, burn it all the way. Because you want the subconscious mind to do the work. You ever say, I'm looking for a girlfriend. Can't find one just if I can quit. And all the hoes mm -hmm. start rolling up. Like, then you're like, how do I make it stop? Because you actually quit it. More women are knows that. I'm looking for a big guy, a little big guy, and since us the girls live in shortage, they say, forgive me, I quit. I don't want you to go down. And then that guy shows up. <laughs> because they had this intention, the conscious mind, like I said, the player hater, the conscious mind, the blockage, the filter, is keeping them normal. So when they want it, now it becomes an intention. When they leave it out their mind, they ain't going to the club to find this guy, the actual work starts to happen. The conscious mind is the hidden. So you have to bring these things into the hidden. That's what a candle is. Light a candle. And it's going to the hit. Your intentions have been lit. This flicker puts you in alpha state, which opens up the subconscious mind for your intention. So you can do the meditation while you're doing it, chants or whatever you're gonna do, but you know it works. So as it burns, it's going into the realm of the invisible I even subconscious mind. That's why it can't work, not just for the lit. Because you're actually activating alpha state and, and you're putting your intention in. The more I think about it every day, hey, hi, hi. That more, I took that thing that was supposed to be the physical to make it normal. So, so that concept is all about bringing it into the hidden. That's that's the that's the magical way because that's the only th way it becomes real. When you bring it into the hidden. Um, yes, I got you. Uh, I just wanted you to break down the, uh, the law of uh, the movie, the, the mind of God, and just give a, a quick okay. example of. That's really the only one you have to learn. The mind is all, the universe is mental. The mind is all, the universe is mental. It's saying, 
Your mind is everything. And the universe is in your fucking mind. That's it. That means to master the universe, you only have to go one place within your own mind. Your divine mind is the universe. So while we're trying to figure out the constellations, Mercury in retrograde is still a form of looking outside of ourselves for salvation. When all of that came in is, is a hologram projected from your own consciousness. So truly manipulate anything in existence right here. So the more we try, what we should do as people, what should we do to hell, how are we going to do this? Waste the goddamn time. This I promise you. So waste the time. Once, as I said, ironically, when I was sitting around going, I'm trying to say no black people, I started to notice every black person going, Haven't you saved me? You know, I'm saved. You, I heard this and it saved me. I heard this and I got a new house. I, I smoked the panic pack and cancer's gone. Like you put a lot of pressure on that pack. You know what I'm saying? A lot of pressure. I want to tell that story. Uh, we come up to me. Like, you know, my prostate nigga, <laughs> what you got on that pack, I'm like, dude, I don't want to be the same. And she said, you know, she talks about it all the time. But it's a journey within. We want to go everywhere but within. So the mind is all, the universe is mental. It's telling you what it is. And then the other things, how to deal with this reality. You know, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and all those things. Eat. I'm going to get out of that question. That helps a little bit. You might sound like a dumb question. I'll be like, no, it's all I don't um I don't understand hate. Because like I really don't believe anybody can do anything to me, you know? So I don't I don't think nobody can do anything to me. So when people are like you got these uh Haitian book cards or different people, you know got different groups of people around me that doing these spells, they're doing these rituals and these spells, and they are for protection rituals or something. So I'm like how real is the hex? I don't see it as being real. But then again, I mean, they land with it and they believe in it, and so their intention is in it. So I guess that energy could flow and cause some type of turbulence to live and intention to look out. Well, yeah. look at it this way what you're saying is probably reverse protection. But we give out energy all the time. Like with these, I walk in the club and it's going like this. You know what it is. I'm trying to get that out. So that's. I didn't say nothing, and I'm directing energy at the time. I walk in and like, but she do see that face. You know what I'm saying? She had me walk up this damn mountain. You know what I'm saying? She pulled me into this. I don't even know. Y'all heard about that? But um, we're, we're, giving, we're, we're giving off energy. We do it all the time. You know when a girl is sweet on you, you know when she with her man, she about her man. That you you know when you don't think you're that cute, you know what I'm saying? You know all that. You give it out all the time. So a hex is nothing but them trying to give energy. And most of us start to receive it based upon fear or even thinking that one's powerful or this one's powerful. But what you're saying is actually the real science of how it don't work. Say, I don't believe in it. It's not going to work for me. But now I want to believe in it. I don't want to believe in it because people put it on me. I want to believe in it because when you are talking about doing spell work, intention work, or whatever, when you're talking about like when you need to go to court, or when you need to, you know what I'm saying? I got you. Let me get so, you with this. Instead of worrying about hexes and mm -hmm. all of that, what you need to do is protect and fortify yourself with these energies. And if someone has an intent for you, ask for it. So I don't waste my time saying, what do you do to Watch this. I just say, oh, I feel sorry for you. Because what I'm dealing with, within my own no, realm, Okay. Protects me. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. See, Sam Simone that he has on, that's the core. You wear that to core, you be straight. You know what I'm saying? You deal with that energy, you read about him, you deal with it, and fortify it half around you. He's now your invisible friend. That's how you do it. If you have an invisible friend, maybe you slept under the bed, you know, mom, such and such is under the bed. Same thing with them, Sam Simone. I mean, you come to the court, just talk like you're there. But they are. All okay. this energy you're trying to up. So you want to fortify yourself. You don't want to waste your time doing all this. There's a lot of energy that hex somebody. There's less energy to deify yourself and let them hex their own self. Right, right. You can't see that 9-11 energy, right? Say again? How you got to 9-11? 9-11. Not really knowing 
I just said, I'm going to try something different. Everybody was lighting white candles for 9 11. I'm lighting two reverse candles. Woo, wee. This is smart. When there's an incident, like a big incident, yeah. I was trying to capture that shit that happened here. I don't know how. What was, what was, what was that? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, you could. Energy is energy, like electricity. Yeah. Yeah. After I tapped into that 9 11, got my soul in. I was like, oh, this is powerful. I said, well, let me try it with Pope Dodd. Let me see if I can get some of this Pope. You know what I'm saying? The red shoes. Yeah. Sure enough, light came. I, like, I was tapping this light came right through my window. Moonlight, that was like sunlight. I said, ooh, I will delight in this. Energy is neutral, just like the electricity in your wall. You're the one who give it direction. So if you say, oh, your Pope is bad. I ain't get that. I'm ready. That's exactly what's going to be. But if every see y'all gotta understand what they do is a cultist is all they have to get you is thinking synonymously. Then that's like tuning you into a radio station. So every Sunday they got you thinking this synonymously. You got Jesus on the line doing this. So they can tap into a frequency. So when the Pope dies, 9-11, Orlando shootings, police shootings, they're gonna parade it because everyone's thinking the same kind of thing. Yeah, I'm like sucking in what I want. Nothing to do, nothing complex. All you have to do is be like, I want that energy. Give it to me. Visualize the Pope, the red shoe, all the shit they talking about. Back right off of that. You know what I'm saying? They show you him laying, you know, doing this dance, you just be in there doing this dance with him. You be dancing with him, I be in my mind dancing with the Pope. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, bless you. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're really directing the energy that's neutral. You, and now you're going to transmute it to your purpose. I'm the Pope. <laughs> you know what I'm I was walking around giving people sacks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? In my mind, at least. You know what I mean? Give them sacraments. You know, that was a flesh so it's, it's, it's all a mind game. It's all pretend. It's all visualization. It's all imagination. You did it when you was a kid. Did the whole Star Wars movie in your head? Yeah. I remember I said, I'm gonna remember every moment from Star Wars before I go to bed. They open up on the light. <laughs> the camera goes left. <laughs> and it, you was just a master that visualization. Remember you was in the tub with your Skywalker and you just did that and you was just going crazy with it. It was just a whole movie in your mind. Do that again. Now a movie that you direct for your purpose. I'm chill with the Pope. Me and him just doing doo wops. Whatever. You know, long as what you're doing is that's how that's how it's done. It's simple as that. See, when we start thinking, that's when we're going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So it's kind of like, um, it's like 